Analog devices missed on earnings last week, but why is their stock price still up? What do the company's long-term financials tell us that their earnings call doesn't? We're analyzing analog devices, stock ticker ADI. We're using the Select6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for analog devices. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing analog devices for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand their stock performance. Right now, Analog Devices trades for $178.16 per share. Year to date, their stock price is up 10%. Even though this is up, this trails the market. In the last five years, Analog Devices is up 77%. They're compounding at 12% annually. In the last 10 years, they're compounding at 14.5% annually. Going back before the global financial crisis, in the last 18 and a half years, Analog Devices is compounding at 9% annually. Right now, the company pays a 1.82% dividend yield. Their average yield is added onto their return in their stock. Analog Devices trades $22 below their 52-week high. The company's up $45 from their 52-week low. Around 1% of their shares are sold short. Analog Devices is a big business. They have an $89 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to analog devices? Analog devices is a leading analog mixed signal and digital signal processing chip maker. The firm has a significant market share lead in converter chips, which are used to translate analog signals to digital and vice versa. The company serves tens of thousands of customers, and more than half of its chip sales are made to industrial and automotive end markets. Analog devices chips are also incorporated into wireless infrastructure equipment. Now with that understanding, let's get into the numbers. Metric number one, we want their average return on capital to be above 14%. The average business earns a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the business. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock's likely to return when its underlying business returns. These business returns are captured by return on capital. In this time, their returns on capital have declined. They hit a low of just over 4% in their fiscal 2021. This was a company that was significantly impacted by the chip shortage. In most of these other years, they're earning high single-digit returns. When these are averaged out, Analog Devices earns about 8% return on capital in a given year. That's right around an average company below our benchmark. This is an X on metric number one. Metric number two, we want to see five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. These all need to be up for it to be a check. We'll include their last 12 months of numbers when we're looking at their growth here, even though that doesn't show up on their chart. Analog Devices has seen big growth. This is because the company acquired Maxim Integrated in an all-stock deal that valued the company at a combined $68 billion. That deal took place in July of 2020. In this time, it looks like Analog Devices' revenues have doubled, their net incomes have more than doubled, and their free cash flows are up 81%. This is growth across the board for the company, primarily on the back of that big acquisition. Growth for its own sake isn't necessarily good. We'll see if this potentially has paid off for the business in some of our later metrics. This is a check on metric number two. Metric number three, we want to see earnings per share growth. This looks at analog devices from the view of an individual shareholder. It helps us estimate if their maximum integration potentially created or destroyed value for shareholders. In this time, due to their acquisition, Analog Devices has more than doubled their revenue. At the same time, this was an all-stock deal. They've diluted existing shareholders by 37%. That's a sizable amount. Even though that's issuing a third additional shares, their earnings have still grown faster than this and at slightly above average returns on capital. This means their earnings per share have grown. This is a check on metric number three. Metric number four is similar. We want to see free cash flow per share growth. Their free cash flows have grown by 81%, which outdoes their 37% shareholder dilution. This is a check on metric number four for ADI. They've grown their free cash flows per share. This is important because free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. It's ultimately how a company is valued. We'll use two different ways to estimate a fair value for analog devices using their free cash flows later in our analysis. So you'll want to stick around. In recessions, it's businesses with lots of debt that can have the biggest losses and potentially go bankrupt. Metric number five, we want analog devices net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. Right now, analog devices has five and a half billion dollars of net debt. When we add up their free cash flows from their last five years, they produce $12.2 billion of free cash flow. 
That's more than double their current net debt position, meaning they comfortably support their debt. This is a check on metric number five. It seems like analog devices is in comfortable financial shape. So far, they're performing well on our analysis. We have four checks and five metrics. Before we get to our valuation methods, it's time for our bonus. In our bonus, we want analog devices dividend to be covered by their free cash flows. Right now, analog devices pays a 1.82% dividend yield. They've grown their dividends in each of the last five years. In this time, they've also grown their free cash flows overall, and they've done this on a per share basis as well. It looks like they've comfortably supported their dividends using their free cash flows in all five of these years. That's also the case today, with the company having under a 50% dividend payout ratio. This is the support we're looking for. This is a check on our bonus. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want analog devices average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for analog devices. This looks at the business similar to it being a private company. It accounts for both their market cap and their net debt position. Right now, ADI has a $94.5 billion enterprise value. In the last five years, we learned they produced $12.2 billion of free cash flow. This means in an average year, they produce about $2.4 billion of free cash flow. Keep in mind that's not completely inclusive of their maximum acquisition. So their current free cash flows are likely much higher than their average. When we divide their $2.4 billion of their average free cash flow by their $94.5 billion enterprise value, we get around a 2.1% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, they produce $4 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their enterprise value, we get around a 4.2% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's slightly above the yield of the 10-year treasury. These are both below that risk premium, meaning for analog devices, this is an X on metric number six. Don't just throw the business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and talk about our rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze analog devices which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. Because of their maximum acquisition, we're starting with their current free cash flows and using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. In its history, Analog Devices has been a very predictable company. That can better inform these assumptions, but it's no guarantee for the future. Assuming they grow their current free cash flows at 9% annually for the next decade, then in the following decade, assuming that this growth rate is cut in half, if we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, if today's valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of analog devices fair value per share is around $82. That's down under half from their current stock price. Keep some key points in mind. This discount rate is higher than how they performed in their last two decades. It would also be drastically outperforming the S&P 500. The discount rate is an estimate of total returns to shareholders based on their free cash flows. It includes both their average dividend yield and any gains in their stock price. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to analog devices, but we need to address their qualitative factors first. Why don't we find out what those are? Starting with the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, ADI is well positioned to profit from the long-term secular trend of increased electronics components in automobiles, such as in-dash infotainment displays and safety sensors. Number two, analog devices has made shrewd acquisitions in recent years, as Linear Tech and Maxim Integrated have boosted the firm's power management chip business. Number three, Analog Devices has tens of thousands of customers, and it's not reliant on the fortunes of any single chip buyer. But we'd be remiss if we didn't cover the negatives of their business as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, number one, Analog Devices has especially strong exposure to the communications infrastructure and market. Spending by telecom makers on advanced networks has been notoriously lumpy over time. Number two, despite its strong position and diverse exposure, analog devices is still vulnerable to the cyclicality of the overall semiconductor industry. Number three, if US-China trade tensions continue, customers in China may gravitate to analog parts made by ADI's neutral European-based rivals or Chinese domestic analog suppliers. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors of their business. Now it's time to give our rating. 
We learn by analyzing analog devices, stock ticker ADI, the company has fared well on our analysis. It seems recent acquisitions have created value for shareholders. Even as they earn just slightly above average returns, the company's grown fast. The company maintains a strong financial position with a lot of free cash flow to cover their net debt. They've also grown by more than they've diluted shareholders. Keep in mind, semiconductors are a cyclical industry and many semiconductor businesses have done very well in the past decade. Again, this analysis isn't financial advice. Right now, ADI's free cash flow to enterprise value yields don't look attractive compared to the yield of the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, based on those assumptions, if you want a 15% rate of return and their valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of their fair value per share is around $82. Analog devices last traded at those levels back in the middle of 2017. They were slightly above those in the 2020 market crash, but you'd want to be patient for the business. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, analog devices looks like a modest candidate for further research. If you're interested, I'd encourage you to dig in and learn more about the company's acquisitions and how that fits into their broader business strategy. Thanks so much for learning about analog devices with me. Subscribe to the channel and check out this next video.